Okay, um, so my views, take what you want, leave the rest, narcissistic selfishness and selfishness. And generally, uh, I like what Hawkins says, as we, you know, we could say we're increasing in consciousness. Consciousness is, uh, a parable to that is in the interest of the highest good of all concerned. So, uh, narcissistic, you know, I'm an addict. My background is addiction, so, you know, I, I come from a very selfish core, which is just me, you know, uh, and, you know, I would, uh, you know, theoretically, I, you know, I'd probably steal your donuts, you know, if, if, because I can only think of myself. Hawkins talked about it, I think, very, very eloquently in his map of consciousness. So pe people below, um, people below uh, integrity are not able to, um, are not aware of other, peop other people. They don't have empathy for other people. They're just, I mean, I, I remember it from my own addiction, uh, addictive time, it was like, I'm just the only person that matters in this room. And I haven't got the capacity to see how my interactions will affect others. So if that, if I need this donut, then I need this donut. And it wouldn't come to me like I should share the donut with you because I'm hungry and I want the donut. So as you go, as you spiritually elevate, you suddenly get this this awareness of consciousness of your effects on others. So that happens at a certain level. And as you get higher up, and you clear more of your individual consciousness. There's more of a, a connection to others, so that all the interactions are for, for a greater and greater good. There's more of a, a oneness with others. So there's greater happiness and also intuition and consciousness that all actions should be, uh, <clears throat> you know, like when I'm in separation, there's just me in this world and there's nobody else. As you get into the states of oneness, it's like actually I'm one with everyone. So intuitively, if you've got like a cake, you'll cut it up into pieces and it's like, let's all have a piece of cake and that's happiness. Whereas when I'm in just me and I'm hungry, it's just that cake just belongs to me and nobody else. So this is an elevation in spiritual consciousness. Now, I think this thing of um, selfishness um, is, I mean, for me, selfishness means that one is just thinking of one's own self uh, has the capacity, you know, narciss narcissism for me, I, if I if I understand it correctly, is um, just thinking of the self, without the capacity really to empathise with others, to an extreme level, um, and uh, and uh, I think uh, so. Generally speaking, I mean, in twelve step groups, when I'm helping people, it's a thing of first of all. You know, because selfishness, you know, the word, when it, the word selfishness is used on another individual, you have to understand the word of context, where they're, where they're at in their spiritual growth, and what they need to do in order to elevate in consciousness. Um, so if you label somebody with the word selfishness, you're often labeling them from what you perceive selfishness is. You don't understand. You may not know what the context of where they're coming from and where they are on their spiritual journey. So, for someone like uh, like if I'm helping someone in a twelve-step fellowship, then for me it's like they have to get well first before they are able to help, you know, family or others. I mean, if you've got like if you've got an alcoholic, you know, it's like um, you can't be there for your family until you've stopped your alcohol addiction. So, you, you know, even if your, parent, if you, if your family is saying you're selfish, uh, you know, you should be here for us. For me, it's not selfish for them to be working a spiritual program to give up the alcohol. So the context there is it's actually not being selfish, getting well, so that they can then be, help their family later on, even though their family may call them selfish. So that's not being selfish. Um, I think what can happen is it, for some people, there may be very, a great difficulty in getting empathy for others. Um, it might be, I, I'd call that probably, um, so even, you know, all the, all the, um, all the labels of, of mental illnesses are just collections of belief systems that, that come in. You know, so I'm, if, if, if I'm, an, uh, you know, I, like narcissism would be like plugging in the program of narcissism from the collective. So generally, all narcissists will display in a similar way, all anorexics will display in a similar way, all debtors, 
all, um, you know, all addicts actually do think in the same way. There's not enough donuts, there's not enough alcohol, there's not enough Netflix, whatever it is. So, uh, but generally speaking, when you've got, um, uh, the thing that gets you out of selfishness, even if you haven't got a capacity to relate to others because of your belief systems or the karma you've been dealt, is, a, you know, it's like when you've got an intention to spiritually grow, you know, the universe will show you how to get out of it. Because that inner intention is like an invocation to the Holy Spirit or to God or to a higher power to show you a way to not be selfish. Now, selfishness in every single situation is a different context. So what is self... You can't... No other, you know, generally speaking, unless you're spiritually connected, you can't say whether a person's being selfish or not. Because you don't know what the context of the wider situation is. Sometimes... Um, what you label or judge as being selfish might be the right thing for them to do in their stage of their journey and for the highest good because you can't see everything where before you when you judge like for an addict who's just going to lots of meetings working a program and forgiving and is not helping their family that can actually be the right thing that can be un that can be god's will which is unselfish which is they're doing the work they need to get well before they're able to help others even though everyone else in society may go, well, you know, you've never helped your mother and now you're doing all this stuff in your room and going to these bizarre things and doing this spiritual work. You should just forget that and just help, help your family straight away. But actually they're doing the right thing, so you can't really see it. So what's in the interest of the highest good can be found through muscle testing, but it will be in the service of the highest good, but it's difficult to label. So when you're following God's will, it's never selfish, even though what the world would typically describe as selfish can be wrong if you label it onto another person, because you can't see. Only, only like if you've got muscle testing or very tuned into spiritual intuition or an experienced spiritual mentor, can you give appropriate guidance to someone wherever they are in their spiritual journey. So I think um, <clears throat> there, there is... Um, so. You know, there can be impairment to get empathy with others, but then, you know, if you've got that intention, the universe will show you how to, to evolve past that. But I think, you know, if I had narcissism, I probably do. Um, yeah, but I'll just cancel my belief in that. But with every illness, with every medical illness, I want to know what the doctors believe that should be to express it. Because I want to know the program, the data from the collective. And then, you know, then use the Course in Miracles to cancel that out. Or if I had a psychological diagnosis, like, um, I don't know, I'm a psych psychopathic murderer or something, who knows, whatever it is. I just look up what the programs are, you know, and I go, okay, cancel my belief in that. I cancel. And that's a great, you know, that will cancel, the, delete the belief systems out of me. And also, if I do it enough, it will be deleting the belief systems out of the collective as well. You know, because we all, ha it's like these are collective belief systems that are floating around in the collective. So if I cancel my stuff, I'm also partly aiding in, t in, in, in clearing the collective narcissism or clearing the collective donut addiction or clearing the collective, uh, collective selfishness. So, you know, I and mean, that is for me what Dr. Hugh Lenn is doing as, as a, as a um, thing. So selfishness actually... If you can muscle test, actually, you know, like, is it selfish to go... That's a good way. Like, if, like is it selfish for me to go to a spiritual group when there's coronavirus out? So, let me just check. You know, generally your body will go strong if you're able to do muscle testing when you're doing something right. But generally speaking, you know, I think actually spiritual groups are the biggest antidote to coronavirus out there. Because what's happened is global fear and a belief system that is manifesting global fear through coronavirus is the label through which global fear is manifesting. And actually, people who uh, induce greater fear and paranoid behavior and make the collective go into deeper fear, I think is not the, the end solution. I think people who are working on the light and are not believing in coronavirus and are spreading that light into the darkness of the collective fear I think, you know, what London needs is more avatars who do not believe in and are emitting light into the collective darkness. That then, that then will bring positivity and hope 
and, an, and, if, and no longer buying into those belief systems. When there's too much light, you can't hold on to coronavirus in your consciousness. When there's too much light and being emitted into London, you know, the fear will start to dispel like a cloud. So that's the ultimate cure for coronavirus. I'm not trying to be, I mean, do wash your hands. But actually being in fear, washing your hands all day, for me is not the ultimate solution. You know, what's needed is light and people who can transcend belief systems. Because they're transcending their inner belief system in coronavirus and they're clearing the collective belief system in coronavirus. And people who, spiritual groups which emit a lot of light into London are for me, you know, the antivirus on a spiritual level that London requires to the, to the fear and the belief systems. That fear and the belief in Corona is spreading through London. Mm -hmm. And what's required is a miracle, which is light <coughs> and the clearing of that negative belief system is what's needed as a spiritual anti, antiviral, you know. And yes, be practical, but holding on to fear while you're doing practical for me is just not really spreading light into the darkness that is, that is transferring the belief system of, through fear with coronavirus. So, I don't know why I keep talking about coronavirus when I was trying to talk about... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to talk about selfishness. What was that about? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh,